All right, welcome back into Wake Up. Glad you chose to start the day with us. Let's get right to the panel. Everybody is back with us. Christopher Arps, Kelly Sadler, and Rick Gates. Uh, Kelly, I want to start with you. I know you guys have written about this at the Washington Times, um, and I found this really fascinating for two reasons. One, Trafalgar was one of the groups that conducted this poll. Uh, Trafalgar is, if, if you remember, in 2016, they were the only polling group that accurately predicted that Donald Trump would win the election. In 2020, my goodness, he was. they were on again. Um, they conducted an extensive poll that found that 57% of Americans think that Joe Biden is a pino, not a rhino, a pino, president in name only. What surprised me is 32% of Democrats actually agreed with that. Uh, tell us about the poll and, and your reporting, but also um, who do you think is really in charge then? Who's pulling the levers at, at, at the White House? Well, I think it's obvious to the American people that Joe Biden isn't all there. I mean, just look at his performance, his speeches, his gas, uh, the fact that, you know, the press only really gets access to him when he's in the ice cream parlor. So uh, I think the American people are aware of this. This poll shows that. Uh, what's more interesting is that 32 percent of Democrats agree and 58 percent of independence. So you would, of course, think the right would be like, yeah, he's not in control. Uh, but the majority of Americans uh, feel like he's not in control, which leads us to the question, who is running the White House? Well, it's Ron Klan, the chief of staff. It's Susan Rice, who's running all the domestic issues. And then there's a bunch of these West Act execs, 15 of them, um, that are throughout the administration that come from, you know, Anthony Blinken's uh, boutique consulting firm that represented big pharma, right. big tech, and, you know, the defense industry. And, you know, what's interesting about that, too, is a lot of, like you said, a lot of former Obama people, a lot of yeah. former Clinton people as well. Uh, Rick, my other concern, just the obvious question is, so if, if six out of ten Americans don't think that Joe Biden is behind the wheel, uh, why are we not more concerned about that? Well, it is. It's, it's scary that Americans aren't more worried about what, you know, is going on in the, in the White House. I mean, there's Obviously, all kinds of rumors is Jill Biden running the White House. Uh, we, we know one person's not, and that's Kamala. Uh, she seems to be out of the loop and ineffective as, as anybody there. But it does raise serious issues about the president's competency, uh, his physical ability. And we're being challenged all over the world right now, whether it's, you know, China, Taiwan, or Russia, and Ukraine, Iran, and now, you know, with the assassination of the president in Haiti. All of these impact the U.S. and how we're perceived from a credibility perspective and what we're able to do moving forward from a policy agenda. And our foreign policy is in, is in real trouble. Um, Chris, I want to get your thoughts on this uh, before we move on to critical race theory. But it, the, the poll itself, I think, it should be concerning to the majority of people out there. I was When I found the, the Democrat numbers, that's more than three out of ten people, that they, the Democrats that don't think Joe Biden's in charge. Did, I mean, did anybody think Donald Trump wasn't in charge when he was in office? Yeah, I mean, right. it's very hard for them to hide the fact that Joe Biden is not all cognitively there. And I think exhibit one was when we had the uh, summit between him and Vladimir Putin, that his handlers were terrified at, at putting him face to face with Vladimir Putin. That was going to be just a very bad image of uh, President Biden stumbling and bumbling against Vladimir Putin looking uh, uh, confident. So. I'm not surprised that uh, that uh, the majority, or not a majority, but people, especially Democrats, are starting to see that uh, Vice President uh, or, or Joe Biden is not all there. I thought that Loudoun County, Virginia, uh, Chris, thank you. I thought Loudoun County, Virginia was ground zero when it came to critical race theory. And what I've found out over the last several weeks is that this is happening all over America. Parents are rising up. They are going to school board meetings, I, I think, more than we've seen in the last half century. Uh, Randy Weingarten, who is the head of the, uh, the president of the American Teachers Federation, she speaks for 2.3 million people. It's the largest union, uh, teachers union in the country. Uh, she says that CRT, critical race theory, is coming, and there's nothing that anyone can do about it because the White House backs her up. Take a listen. We're seeing a turning point as we have fought the virus. And now we're turning the corner for public education to help nurture and nourish our students and our families. But we needed the resources and we needed the safety guidance. And that is what President Joe Biden did from day one of him being president of the United States of America. All right, so I'm not gonna call for somebody to be canceled or fired 
but I don't know how this woman is running the union. This is the same person that said, OK, kids have got to be six feet apart. Nope, they got to be three feet apart. It's OK. Uh, teachers can't go back until they're vaccinated. Now all the teachers are vaccinated. Many teachers uh, didn't go back. Um, how long can Randy Weingarten Kelly stay in control of this union? She seems completely out of touch. Well, she's a Democrat and she's got the full backing of President Joe Biden. I mean, her teachers union is one of his largest donors. So I think that this past year and with COVID lockdowns exposed a lot of what these teachers unions are. They do not represent the children. They represent themselves. Um, the fact that you know schools may or may not reopen in the fall, that's even a question in some districts, is absurd. The change in guidance, the fact that they were coordinating and working with the CDC to make, to make sure that their guidance was ambiguous so that they couldn't get back kids back into right, school this right. year. I mean, it's absolutely insanity. And the last thing they should be worried about is critical race theory. They should be worried about what this fall looks like and these kids that have missed a year in ed of ed their education, how they're going to help them um, with their mental health struggles as well, uh, being isolated for the past year, reacclimate them into school. No one talks about that. Panel, really enjoyed it this morning. Great conversation. Rick Grates, Christopher Arps, uh, Kelly Sadler. Great stuff this morning. Look forward to having you on again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be with you. Allison.